anyway uh moving on from that let's talk about let's talk about conscription squads being sent uh uh inside of ukraine uh sending ukrainian men into hiding this is not great for um this is not great for the the cause overall one thing to compare within uh one thing to compare with respect to ukraine versus palestine with respect to gaza is that there are a lot of similarities okay there are a lot of similarities in terms of like ukrainians wanting to resist against the russian occupation However, however, the major difference, and this is something that I bring up all the time when talking about like wars of attrition, right? The major difference is that Ukraine is a nation state, albeit nowhere near as developed as some of its other counterparts, but it's still a developed nation state technically or developing nation state before the Russian invasion. Therefore, the civilian population is uh, used to a certain standard in quality of life. This changes the dynamic of how they would like to resist or how long they will resist or how they resist against colonial occupation or occupation of any sort. It's technically still state by state versus state violence. Now, because of that reason, there are a lot of people in said state that would go, what the f I don't want to do this. I don't want to fight. I don't want to die. That's a perfectly understandable, uh, that's a perfectly understandable thing to, to, to feel, right? I don't want to get drafted just like the united states of america i don't want to go get fucked drafted. even if america got invaded i was like that i'm not fighting against this shit you know we've been asking for this invasion in here in the united states of america so that's that's one thing to consider so many ukrainian men left the country many ukrainian women left the country ukraine was 45 million people before the russian invasion and after the russian invasion i believe the numbers are down to like 36 million so tens of millions of ukrainians left understandably and of course at the time western world opened up its arms to the ukrainian refugees i am very supportive of the matter as well i was very openly supportive of the matter but that has, of course, led to not enough citizens ready to fight take up arms and defend against the Russian invasion. That 45 million is bullshit. They haven't had a census in like 30 years. <sighs> Ukrainian population over the years. Let's look. Uh, it's 38 million now, apparently. Um, the current population of Ukraine is 37.9 million, a 3.25% from 2020 increase from 2023. The population in Ukraine in 2023 was 36 million, a 7.4 decline from 2022. In 2022, it was 39 million, an eight point decline from 2021. The population in Ukraine in 2021 was 45 million. Careful when speaking about France, advice by French fan. I little bit disappointed by our words during pixel war what words uh, were you disappointed by my french friend or oh, 43 million sorry not 45 million 43 million so in the population of ukraine in 2021 was 45 uh four i keep saying 45 sorry dyslexia 43.5 million the population in ukraine now is at 37.9 million okay and at his lowest point it was 36.7 million 36 almost 37 million so it's not 10 million but uh, you know millions of people have left ukraine that of course means you know millions uh or at least a couple hundred thousand soldiers that could fight against the russian invasion let's continue ukraine is facing one of its most perilous chapters since the start of russia's full-scale invasion with moscow's offensive getting ever more intense the ukrainian army desperately needs to enlist more troops but more than two years into the war is struggling to find willing volunteers a correspondent jean mckenzie reports from the city of Odessa. At Sergei's wedding, it wasn't just the weather that didn't go to plan. Half of the guests didn't show up. Going out in public is now too risky for men who don't want to enlist. But the bride, Tanya, understands why her friends and family don't want to fight. Her father was killed on the front line. Are you afraid that you might be caught and, and sent? Yes, I'm afraid. I also afraid. Of course I'm afraid too and don't want it. It happened twice in my family the average age of the ukrainian uh military defense is now 43 that's also something to remember it's a it's devastating public transport has become a no-go for those trying to avoid the draft conscription officers have a fearsome reputation for dragging people off buses and taking them to conscription centers these officers are on the hunt for draft dodgers it's hard to find willing soldiers these days, so now it's the law for men to register so they can be called up. 
Yeah. Are you part of the problem? Because people are hiding from you. They're scared of you. Look, some people react aggressively towards us. Others run away from us. This happens often. I don't think these people have been well brought up. These guys are having a pretty difficult time finding people who are eligible to serve. And they do accept that some people are hiding from them. But they are urging men to come forward because they say everybody has to play their part in defending this country. Behind these walls, men are hiding at the very moment the Ukrainian army needs them the most. Russia, with its superior manpower, is on the offensive. This is Vova. He won't leave the house without checking these social media groups, which tell him where the officers are. I don't walk outside at all now, unless I'm with my daughter, because they don't take people with their children. The Ukrainian army says that it needs people like you to fight if it is to win this war. I'm not a military person. I've never held a weapon. I don't think I'd be useful on the front line. But I know if I get drafted, this is where I'll be sent. These men who are hiding, I don't consider them men. What are they waiting for? Vlad was badly injured serving on the front line. If we run out of men, the enemy will come to their homes, they will rape their women and kill their children. Why can't NATO send more troops like undercover? They already send weapons and shit. It's a tightrope between like how much further you can push Russia without Russia like escalating. And Russia is also escalating in kind as well. I mean, you have Russian submarines doing military operations uh, and, and uh, moving into Cuba, which Cuba is welcoming. You know what I mean? That's like Russia has said time and time again that if you in, uh, if you if you uh, continue your support to a degree that harms, I don't know, people inside of Russia, for example, with your weapons, then we'll bring the war to your doorstep. You have uh, cybersecurity risks uh, all around uh, Western Europe and all around the world in general. Cyber attacks can happen. It's just a escalation. I know a 20 to 25 year old Ukrainian student turned H-1B worker in the U.S. He can't return or he'd be instantly drafted. Hopefully he can get a green card. Yeah. <laughs> Recruitment posters line the streets of Odessa. The message, together to victory. But Ukraine is now divided between those who are prepared to fight and those who would rather run or hide. Jean McKenzie, BBC News, Odessa. Father's Day weekend was full of... Pre um, here, is a, here is a Lindsey Graham take. Uh, what did Trump do to get the weapons flowing? He created a loan system. They're sitting on 10 to $12 trillion of critical minerals in, in Ukraine. They could be the richest country in all of Europe. I don't want to give that money and those assets to Putin to share with China. If we help Ukraine now, they can become the best business partner we ever dreamed of. That 10 to $12 trillion of critical mineral assets could be yeah. used by Ukraine and the West, not given to Putin and China. This is a very big deal how Ukraine ends. Mm -hmm. Let's help them win a war we can't afford to lose. Let's the U.S. and Ukraine is on the wrong side of history. This is just fact. Dude, I don't understand. I don't understand how the f like, dude, dude, come on, come on, please. They don't want to die for NATO and U.S. military industrial complex. The only safe place for Ukrainian men is in Russia is so f insane. Like, I can't tell if you're trying to bait me at the top of the hour or if this is a legitimately held opinion that you have. Some chatters will chirp in about like Donbass and be like, oh, well, it's because like Putin was protecting Donbass. These arguments are almost as laughable as like denazification as a, as a reason as to why Russia invaded Ukraine. I just hope, I hope that you are simply trying to bait me at the top of the hour into serving a three minute ad break, knowing full well that I will respond to that because of how ridiculous that shit is name one time when the u.s is on the right side of history uh world war ii easy also even if u.s is ostensibly on the right side of history on the ukrainian situation because like technically ultimately yes ukraine has a right to sovereignty they have a right to not be f invaded okay that's ridiculous but um, the american interest in ukraine is very clearly the american interest is is very clearly not on ukrainian emancipation but instead as does donbass yeah i know dude that's why again a laughable notion how many people have been killed so far how many russians have been killed so far you act like russia's invasion of ukraine was not done with the same interest that this 
dipshit has, uh, whether it be mineral rights or whether it be having uh, access to the Black Sea with uh, respect to obviously Crimea. But beyond that, it's, uh, you know, making sure, making sure that uh, Ukraine is not in the Western sphere of influence and that like uh, Russia can can maintain a stranglehold over Ukraine, Ukrainian minerals, Ukrainian resources and pick apart Ukraine for scraps, turn it into fucking Belarus. The idea that it was a defensive posture to defend the people in Donbass is so ridiculous because look how many people have died since. You're wrong about Ukraine and Russia. Sure. I, wait, are you telling me I'm wrong? So was Russia dumbass. You're wrong about Ukraine and Russia. What? I think a lot of chatters personally do not understand. A lot of chatters personally don't understand my position on the matter at all. Ukraine is not sovereign. Uh, Hassan Ivy was strong down into World War II, used it to sell weapons and usurp old Angloid Empire, then nuked hundreds of thousands of civilians. The U.S. was not on the right side of history. They were parasites then too. The United States, you asked me when the U.S. was on the right side of history. World War II is, that's it. That is like an obvious example of being on the right side of history. Also, if you abide by these exact same standards, you would be infinitely more critical of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, don't you think? Because even if Russian interest at the time of its invasion was to save Ukraine from Western, uh, you know, emancipate Ukraine from Western influence and the Western sphere of influence, what they have done so far is, you know, World War, not World War II, but like America level shit. So what's up? Is only America bad? I think Russia's bad too, proceeds to use pro-Russian talking points. Are you talking about me or are you talking about that chatter? I'm a little confused. In any case, the, the denazification argument is silly. Saving LPR and DPR is also just as silly. Why? Look at the actions since. An invasion does not save LPR and DPR. You open, you break the dam that was built to deny waterways into uh, Crimea. Sure. But ultimately, at what cost? If your goal is to pr is, if your goal is the preservation of life, then an invasion is the worst thing you can fucking do. Ridiculous. Um, my response to Mr. Putin is this. If you're so worried about becoming a victim of tax, your troops, livelihoods, and your military units, and get the hell out of Ukraine, you don't have any business being there in the first place. It's so funny. I'm going to close my eyes and imagine he's saying this about Israel. So this Russian threat to potentially strike um, British targets on Ukrainian territory and beyond. What is the White House response to that type of Oh, also, I forgot to, I served you the three minute arm break, but I forgot to actually serve it. Like, I forgot to actually run the three minute arm break, which I'm doing now. Rhetoric coming from Moscow. I would, my, look, my response to, to Mr. Putin is this. If you're so worried about becoming the victim of attacks, and you're worried about your troops' livelihoods and your military units, then get the hell out of Ukraine. You don't have any business being in there in the first place. That's my best advice. Yeah, get the hell out of Gaza. Get the hell out of Gaza then. That's my response to Israel. You're so worried about your units, so worried about the diaper forces. Get the hell out of Gaza. Advice, Mr. Putin. Yeah, right, Here was a, another f silly ass. Brandon uh, moment before we get to uh, Biden holding an LA fundraiser, which Austin refused to go to. Um, this is pretty cool. White House press secretary says videos of Biden lost and confused. Uh, ironically, fakes. several several recent cheap fakes actually attacked the president for thanking troops. For thanking troops, that is what they're attacking the president for. Both in Normandy, this happened, and again in Italy. And uh, I think that it tells you everything that we need to know about how, um, how desperate, how desperate Republicans are here. Uh, and uh, instead of talking about the president's performance in office, and what I mean by that is his legislative wins, what he's been able to do for the American people across the country, we're seeing these deep fakes. Uh, these manipulated videos. Bro, that's the worst possible thing you could say because it's not a deep fake. Just say it's cut out of context.